Hey, I'm Zenki and welcome to Starbase. In this tutorial series, we will be going over how to design a spaceship in Starbase from start to finish. In this preface or part zero of the series, we will go over the UI and tools available to you in the SSC or Spaceship Creator. To create some more confusion, I will call it the designer from now on, since that is a common name used within the Starbase community. What you currently see on screen is an overview of all the windows available in the designer, which we will all cover in the next few minutes. You can disable these windows and drag them around all you want, so you can arrange them in a way that works for you. A lot of features in the designer have hotkeys as well, which I will show when we get to each tool. Starting out, we'll talk about the top bar you see on screen. In the left corner, you have your file selection and settings menus from which you can load files, select all or no parts, and open the game settings. Then you have all your tools you might need while building a spaceship, the save button and delete button, and undo and redo operators. Next to that you have the module buttons, and test flight and show detached objects button, which I'll all go over in a little bit. The first window we will look at is the asset browser. This window contains all the parts available for designing your spaceship, as well as modules. All the parts are categorized in folders, which you will want to know by heart. I will go over which parts you can find where in the next video, where we will talk about what parts you need for a ship and how to use them. At the bottom of the asset browser, you can find pre-made and custom modules, which we will also have a look at in a future video. The next window we will look at is the toolbox combined with the tool options. The toolbox contains every tool available in the designer, and the tool options window contains settings for some of those tools. We will go over each tool one by one, and we will discuss the options the tools have. The move tool with keybind 1 lets you move parts around in the designer after placing them. You can select a part by clicking on it, and use the arrows to move it along one of its axes. You can also move the object on a plane by dragging one of the squares. Then if you want to move the object along three axes, or in three dimensions, you can drag the white cube at the center. The rotate tool, keybind 2, lets you rotate a part and works very similarly to the move tool. To rotate a part, simply select it and drag one of the rings. By default, rotation happens in 15 degree increments. In the rotate tool options, you can change those increments by either dragging the bar, which changes it in 5 degree steps, or you can manually enter any integer value. You can also change the rotation speed, which means how far you have to drag your mouse to rotate an object. Then lastly, you can manually enter any rotation value in the top three fields. On Keybind 3, we have the Select tool. This tool has no fancy features, but is mainly a way to select parts without any indicator getting in the way. This tool can also be selected by pressing the keybind for the tool you're using again. So say I have the move tool selected, I could press 1 again to go to the select tool. You can also drag for a rectangular selection, to select multiple parts at once, or hold shift to add and control to remove parts from the existing selection. Next up on Keybind 4 is the Bolt tool, which lets you place and remove bolts. This is very straightforward. Left click to place, right click to remove. This is used to attach various parts together, and you will see me mess with this one a lot further on in this series. On 5 we have the Cable and Pipe tool, which lets you place and remove cables and pipes. These are used to connect various parts to the data, power and propellant networks. The only option for this tool is a toggle between cables and pipes. It works the same way as the bolt tool does, left click to place, and right click to remove. The durability tool, Keybind 6, shows you the structural integrity of your ship. This indicates whether your ship will be able to stay intact during flight, and it can show you how stress will flow through your ship. I will show this tool off in more detail once we have an actual ship built further on in the series, 
But for now, left click just shows the structural integrity and right click shows the stress overlay. Neither of these options currently do much because we have no thrusters connected to this little frame section I've built here. The snap tool on 7 lets you select a snapping point on one part and snap that point to a snapping point on another part. This is sometimes necessary when auto snapping does not do what you want it to or when you want to snap parts at an angle. On 8 there is the socket tool which lets you create sockets. Sockets are meant to be used as a neat way to pass power through beams and plates but have some more uses like connecting buttons to the data network of a ship. More about those options later on in the series as well. The only option it has is separate end placement, which lets you place both ends of the connection manually. Then there is the paint tool, which does not have a keybind by default. The paint tool lets you paint most parts a different color to spice up your creation a bit. There is a variety of colors you can pick from, which is what the paint colors window is for. The options let you change how many parts are painted at once by changing the width and the depth of the brush. Next up is the auto bolt tool, which can be a great help if you need to bolt a lot of parts in your ship. It tries to find locations where bolts are necessary to connect pieces of your ship together. It automatically places attachment plates where necessary as well. You can also use it to remove all bolts from your ship or only apply any of these options to the parts you have selected. The hotkey for this tool is 9. Similar to the paint tool, there is now the material tool. This tool lets you change the material of most of the pieces of your ship, where each material has its own properties. You can select a material from the materials window and click any parts that you want to change to that material. The settings are the same as the paint tool for brush radius and depth. This tool also does not have a default hotkey. Last but not least, we have the weld tool, which is an alternative to the bolt tool, but only for beams. It lets you create an invisible connection between beams that are connected in a valid way, to make frame building a lot easier. It has similar options to the bolt tool, with the addition of replace all beam bolting, which will try to replace bolts and attachment plates that are used to connect beams together. This tool also doesn't have a default hotkey. Next up is a tool I personally never use, which is the multi-user undo system, or Moose. It shows all actions done in the editor session, including UI changes. It allows you to select any action and undo or redo it. Then there is the scene view, which has an overview of all the parts that are currently in use in your designer. It lets you highlight a part by hovering over it and selecting by clicking on it in the list. Due to how cluttered this list can get, it is also a tool that I don't really use. Properties window is where you can change the name and value of the device fields of the selected part. This is used to, for example, link thrusters to their controls or make displays show the right value. I will make a video about device fields and how to use them as well, because they can be a little confusing at first. The next window is the YOLO script editor, which is where you can put code on YOLO chips. YOLO is the in-game language used to program basic features on a ship and is very simple by design, mostly consisting of math. There's a lot that you can do with it though, ranging from zeroing your guns to building entire GPS and asteroid avoiding systems. But that is all for another video too. The last window we are going to look at is the building budget. This window tells you a lot of information about your ship its cost, how many parts it has in total, and how many of various categories, and how many voxels it has. It also shows you various limits, which you cannot go above inside the designer. If you do add more of those pieces to your ship outside the designer, your ship will no longer function, so this really is a hard cap. 
I hope you liked that short introduction to the designer. In the next video, we will go into the first steps of building an actual ship. Be sure to subscribe to the channel for more Starbase content and comment what you want to know more about. See you in the next one.